My name is Dennis Shurney. I was one of the founders of the school back in 1992, the first principal, and then later the first head of school. Uh, we grew the school from 67 kids in 1992 to a much larger number, as you see now, uh, in, in 2005 when I left, and then uh, watched the school grow from now in size, but also to move from Portsmouth, that's its name, up to this campus in Dover. So I've been a part of the school for about 15 years now. Land has uh, always been a, a key part of our strategic plan in the leadership of the school. I think a large part, this interest and this concern is generated by the fact that we didn't have any to start with. Uh, we were in a lease situation for the first uh, eight, 10 years of the school. Uh, we had uh, uh, no certainty of renewals of lease. We had no permanency at all. It's a strange situation where we have part, the enrollment of the school is skyrocketing, and yet our chances of being able to continue as a school were going down at the same time because we had no place to go and no, no money to buy anything with. So the whole idea of having a permanent home was a dream that we just prayed about all of the time. How could we possibly find a place? How could we possibly finance it if we did find it? So our first land purchase was this land, uh, 45 acres. It's known for its beauty. It's, it's, uh, it was old farmland, and I'll get to that in a few minutes because the farmer, the people who own that farm uh, are the ones we deal with today in terms of uh, uh, of future acquisitions we're considering. So it, it was a dream come true. It was the an answer prayer to, to have uh, this land uh, suddenly uh, become a reality to the school. And I remember the first day of school in the fall of 99, leaving the office and looking out and watching kids, the cross country teams taking off, the kids are playing on a, on a soccer field, not that one that was built later. And thinking to myself, God is so good. I mean, there was this, the previous playground was a, a rock. You know, the kids would fall on it. There was nothing to do. There was just, there was no place for us to, the kids to, to play sports, to do anything. And to, Walk out and see this magnificent campus with these kids playing on it was just very inspiring for me. It was really answered prayer. Art Gassis was the, as I say, the patriarch of the family. He's a, this was a working farm at one point. They sold some of the property to the, to the uh, hospital at that time, later became our school uh, as well. He had, a, he had a real affection, the whole family had a real affection for every spot of this land. He knew it well, it was in their family for years and years. And uh, I got to meet him shortly after we acquired the property. And it wasn't too long after we met that we stood, stood on, the, on the ridge near his home, looking down over the school. And I expressed an interest in this, this land behind me, uh, which is the land that goes from the soccer field, from the baseball field up to the hill to his home. Uh, and uh, he indicated that, he had a, that if he ever chose to sell it, that he would give us the right of first refusal on that land. But Art was a great, great guy, and uh, he, I just picture him, he did all the plowing and he did all the mowing, uh, and he was an older man, at least in his 70s, uh, but he just loved the land, and uh, his whole family were like uh, guardian angels of his campus. When everybody came down here at night, they came down on their own and chased him out. They were just, they were very protective of our school. Uh, and we're very appreciative of that. So we have a very warm relationship with the Gasses family. It has been for years and years and years. Uh, unfortunately, Art died, and uh, that same meeting when we were sitting at the top of the hill, his son Paul was there as well. So, uh, and I was hoping that when dad, his dad died that he would be willing to continue uh, that relationship, and, and that was certainly affirmed. Much to my pleasure, I, I heard uh, after I left that uh, the land was going to be made available, that discussions were ongoing. Uh, I was just overwhelmed uh, with the idea that the, that offer was there. The next question was how you're going to buy it. Uh, and uh, I know the school has uh, uh, been very carefully uh, trying to uh, uh, find ways to raise money to, to purchase the land. And I've been informed recently that uh, through the efforts of Elena and, and you and the uh, all the people and uh, the donors and the friends of the academy have come together and uh, have raised enough money to actually purchase this first parcel. 
and that that closing might occur here sometime soon in the near future. And it's just thrilling to hear about the generosity of the people who, who sense the need for that land and what we can do with it, what it does to protect the school from encroachment, what it does for future provision of ball fields, perhaps a fine art center, whatever it might be. We now have the freedom to be able to have the land to, to uh, execute the dreams we want to dream. So I'm grateful for that generosity. I understand there's a bit more to go to get the second parcel. All I would do is encourage those people to uh, to look at the, uh, the opportunities this presents to the future generations of kids that are coming here. We've had tens of thousands of kids go through the school. Uh, over 1,200 have come all the way through and graduated. Uh, the school has influenced a lot, a lot of people. Uh, the people who are enjoying the fruits of the school as you see it now are doing so because of this generosity and the attitude and the work of the people in the past. You can now be part of that to prepare the future for the next generation of, of kids that will be coming to the school. So I encourage you to, to give and give generously to this cause. It's a, it's a real investment in the future of the school and the uh, educational possibilities for the kids in the region.